So welcome. I want to uh, thank you all for, for coming to this panel on live performance uh, amidst a pandemic. And I am honored to be joined by our guests who uh, are um, Dr. Jeffrey Bachman. He's a professor of music and director of bands at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. He conducts the wind ensemble, teaches courses in conducting and wind literature, and oversees the entire UH Bands program. Sarah Tochiki is the director of college orchestra, college band, and jazz ensemble at Kauai Community College. And she is the band director also at Chiefess Kamakahelei Middle School. And finally, Chadwick Kamei is the director of the University of Hawaii West Oahu University Band, and is also the director of bands, fine arts department head, and music learning center coordinator at Pearl City High School in Pearl City, Hawaii. So thank you all for joining us. And, and I, um, I wanted to start with just a introduction of your band programs and so that we can, our audience can know a little bit about what the scope of your activities are. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Sarah. Hi, John, thanks, thanks for having this and thanks for hosting this. Uh, at Koi Community College, we are the only community college within the system that has a full instrumental music program. And we have a, a jazz ensemble, symphony orchestra, and, and wind symphony. Uh, our program is a hybrid program. So it is part community band, part class that the students can take for college credit. Uh, so we operate through the Office of Continuing Education as well as through the, the college as um, courses through the college that, that students can enroll in for their uh, associate's degrees. Uh, and so we, uh, pre-pandemic had uh, a very robust program with uh, three nights a week, one ensemble each night, and uh, would do a couple of concerts a year. Uh, we've shifted a little bit now because we uh, have lost some personnel due to uh, our older population in our groups that, that are uh, nervous about playing and uh, did a lot of chamber music last year and, and are now finally getting back to rehearsing as a full ensemble. Great. Thank you, Sarah. And let's see, um, Jeff. Yeah, uh, do you want to talk about the entire music department or just the instrumental area or just the bands? It's a, there, there, there's a whole lot of stories to be told there. I know, and and I do want to point out. Thank you for bringing that up because it it was a um, a real effort. We wanted to paint a picture of all live performance, um, and uh, uh, I think our schedules allowed for this uh, particular group, uh, which is really great because um, I think it. So Jeff, if you could speak to perhaps the band program. Okay. Uh, I, John, thanks for putting this on and for asking me to, to, to serve on it. So the uh, UH Bands program uh, is uh, multifaceted. We've got a, 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 a large marching band. We've got a, a number of pep bands. We've got uh, <clears throat> two or three concert bands, depending on the semester. We've got a jazz ensemble. We've got a number of chamber groups. Uh, uh, all told, that's well over 100 performances a year uh, between all those groups. Amazing. Thank you. And, and Chad. Thanks again, John, for including us on this and, and having this uh, session. It's really great to, to be talking about music as we start to um, navigate through this pandemic and start getting on the other side of this thing. So thank you for putting this together. Um, at UH West Oahu, we're like Sarah, we're a hybrid uh, community based ensemble. We have students from West Oahu that perform in our group, um, in our in our band. We have students from West Oahu. We also have community members, so lifelong musicians that just need an ensemble to play in. And we also have some um, the high school students from around our area. Um, we also serve um, 
music teachers and you know we have our rehearsals are in the evening so after all their their duties at school um they're able to come and participate with our group in the evenings so um we serve a variety of of groups um and we have about you know, right now, because of COVID, we have a smaller ensemble, but in the past, we've had about, you know, uh, 70 or 80 people in our ensemble. So um, we're, 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 we're doing a lot of music out there, um, you know, throughout before the pandemic. So hopefully we can do that once the pandemic ends. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that introduction. I think it's helpful to, to just know, um, you know the, the variety of activities that that uh, you all represent um, in the in the band world here in Hawaii, and and I'm really curious to know how you um, you know what happened in March of 2020. Uh, what was your experience when the pandemic hit and this crisis, you know, for music, and how did you deal with it? Uh, and I know that's a little bit of a longer story, but uh, I um, perhaps I uh, will go in reverse order. Uh, so we'll start with with Chad, and then Jeff, and then Sarah. So you know, when the pandemic hit, it was it was very disruptive. We were in the middle of uh, preparing for a concert season. Um, this was the, right before spring break, so we had about two months of of music making we had our program set you know april was supposed to be our when we having our concerts and and um performing and things like that so we were you know we were maybe two-thirds of the way there to a concert so of course immediately everything had to cease um, you know the the health of our the health of our members was was number one so um, we ceased the in large group operations um and then we really kind of just shifted to figure out what what our stakeholders you know um the, the main stakeholders in our in our ensemble um like i said we're a hybrid group so a lot of it is community based and we had a we had maybe about 10 people that were actually in the you know registered members of the course so we really shifted our focus onto those onto those individuals because you know they're they're getting credit we needed to make sure that we we fulfilled at least something for them. So what we did, we, we moved online and we went away from the music making. Um, a lot of them were, were teachers, you know, a lot of them were trying to, you know, get reclassification credits and things like that. So we moved to, um, to uh, lectures and guest, guest speakers for those last uh, few months of the pandemic. So uh, we were lucky to have uh, really great people in our music industry that were willing to do whatever it takes um, to just keep the interest in music and keep people um, um, thinking about music through that pandemic. So we we went uh, and we we got some contacts and we had some people come in and guest lecturers, composers, other conductors around the nation. And it was a really good it was a really good opportunity to kind of shift away from that and kind of focus on the teaching aspect and the professionalism in music. So. That was a really um, that was really great for for us to be able to to do that. Otherwise, we would have just been you know continuing to make music, which is great. Um, but it just gave us a, a different opportunity to to f focus on another aspect of music making and teaching. So that's that's what we ended up doing uh, through the pandemic. Mm. Lemons out of lemonade out of lemons. Yes, yes. <laughs> Jeff, thank you, Chad. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, I'll, ta I'll talk generally about the band program and then about the wind ensemble. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they kind of had different experiences to some extent. Mm -hmm. The um, uh, 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 entire band program was, of course, uh, put online, like everyone's uh, music programs, I think, here in Hawaii. Uh, and in, uh, my goodness, uh, over two years ago, <laughs> two years ago now. Um, I think we didn't do a great job for the first month or two, if I'm honest. I think we we just tried to salvage what we could. And so there was a lot of, like Chad uh, mentioned, we did a lot of um, Zooming in. Well, we discovered what Zoom was, I think, and then uh, uh, started Zooming in um, performers, composers, um, uh, com uh, 
Yeah, who, who, who I think we, I, I, I don't think we didn't provide an enriching experience, but I don't think it was pedagogically as sound as, uh, as it evolved to be, I think a little later on. The entire program though did get shut down. Uh, uh, I think during the summer, there was a heck of a lot of planning and then scrapping those plans and replanning and scrapping those plans. Like all of us just pivoting as the uh, uh, information changed and our understanding of the information changed, right? So for the first couple of months, it was uh, um, putting all the instruments in the band room and wiping them down because that's how we thought things got transmitted. Uh, in terms of uh, marching band, well, we, we, we couldn't do any of that. And so that was entirely online, uh, which was a challenge. How do, how do you run a 250 piece band online? So uh, uh, what the marching band did is largely section based. So they would break into sections and, and uh, um, do individual instrument recording projects uh, uh, virtual recording projects and uh, um, splice all those together. So we had some performances. Um, some of the concert bands went the same way for wind ensemble. I, I know I'm talking too much. And so if, if, if you just start to nod off, I'll know to stop. No, 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 keep uh, going. <laughs> so for the wind ensemble specifically, uh, uh, Sarah may remember this. I think maybe a week after we got back from uh, Kauai, right? We, we just had just brought our wind ensemble over there and did a couple performances with Sarah's fantastic group over there. And uh, um, John got to play the Symphony of the Wine Birds over there, which of course you were a part of. And we were um, so thrilled to be able to do that. And we were, I think, a week away from taking that to CBDNA uh, to perform that there when all this happened. Uh, a boohoo, there was a lot of I'm sorry, CBDNA for those who don't know. Sorry, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. For College Band Directors National Association, the Western um, Region uh, Conference, we were going to perform that there. And, and uh, uh, that took the wind out of the, the student sales for sure. Uh, <clears throat> in the large scale of things, I mean, I, no one died. The wind ensemble was fine. Uh, so it's tough to uh, um, feel too sorry for ourselves, I think, although I think maybe all of us did a little bit of that pity party, mm -hmm. uh, um, even if it was just a table for one Sundays. Anyhow, so uh, 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 we uh, pivoted to an online platform and I just tried a whole bunch of things, you know, I think most of us have uh, should probably mention a trigger warning when we use words like Jamulus or Jamkazam or Upbeat or any of those apps that we tried to to navigate in terms of you know trying online performance or online collaborative rehearsals and my goodness uh, the education we all got in digital audio workstations and everything it's uh, remarkable uh, so we we went online and uh, developed a curriculum that in, uh, included a lot of um, improvisation work and developing improv skills, but improv where it was more responsorial to what other folks were doing. So a lot of uh, Jeff Agrell's, Jeffrey Agrell's uh, um, ideas on improv, those uh, were a source of nourishment for us, for sure. And in terms of them being able to do some collaborative efforts where one person would play and then one would respond and we kind of have a little telephone game going over Zoom uh, and doing some drone-based improv, et cetera, et cetera. Um, did some uh, um, virtual um, band performing as well, where we'd work up individual parts uh, uh, and then collaboratively put them together, uh, which is a, a poor substitute for in person. And I, I'm eager to get, I'm, I'm very happy we're away from that now. And I was a little worried that um, administrators would, would see this as a viable solution for us. Uh, that, well, heck, you, you, this works online, right? So why do we need large ensembles at all? Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that we're returning to the large ensembles. Anyhow, uh, I did some of that, did some uh, um, um, virtual band stuff, did a lot of literature that was chamber-based because we could work in small groups more effectively. So a heck of a lot of chamber programming for, uh, well, almost two years worth of that, right? Over a year and a half of chamber programming where the largest group we had was 12, eight, 10, seven, nine, uh, some fantastic repertoire, uh, um, but that was uh, how we kind of got through this. 
Uh, and then, boy, just in the last two months, uh, I guess we've been able to come back to full and some. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I know that I remember that moment when when uh, um, the the trip had to be canceled to the trip to Seattle, the the unveiling of the Symphony of Hawaiian Birds for for the mainland audience. And uh, yeah, that was hard. Sarah, how about you in your program? Yeah, I was re I was actually reflecting last night as I was preparing for this thing. Like, oh, the last live concert that we did in the Performing Arts Center was was with Jeff's Wind Ensemble, and and we had a full house um, when we did that collaborative performance. I mean, it, to think that that nobody was wearing a mask, nobody was social distancing. It was standing room only, and and remembering that feeling. And then it was like, it got all stripped away from us. And so if, if we're gonna go out before the pandemic hit, I think that was a pretty good way to, to go out because it was a, a, a wonderful performance and, and a great chance for us to collaborate because on Kauai, you know, we're, we're kind of it in terms of large ensembles and places for people to perform and getting a chance to collaborate with, with UH Manoa was, was a really nice opportunity and, and, and to get to, um, to have the community involved in, in the way that that whole performance went out is was exactly what we were building towards with our our uh, program here at Kauai Community College too. Um, and so then when they decided that everything was going to go online, <clears throat> it was like they, they, nobody knew what was going on. So it was two weeks and then, okay, two more weeks and then, okay, two more weeks um, before then everything just decided, okay, we're going to go along for the rest. So when the first initial shutdown happened, we were thinking, okay, well, everybody just go and rehearse your parts for a couple of weeks and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. This is going to all blow over. Um, and I remember even um, calling up chat or we were texting or something and going, um, so what are you guys going to do for the next couple of weeks? And thinking, oh yeah, we're just going to practice and do our thing. Uh, and then after that, it was, okay, no, this is going to last for a while. Um, so because we are hybrid, uh, the students who are taking it as non-credit office of continuing education i just called them up and i said just please refund their money for the last four rehearsals um and and we're going to concentrate on those who are enrolled for credit those were who who are enrolled for credit i just assigned individual practice technique and said let me know how it's going and and checked in mostly via email uh because we weren't at the zoom point yet and then after um that first initial semester finished, then it was the waiting game of the, the aerosol study to see, okay, well, what can we do? Uh, and I feel like there's been a little bit of misinformation because the, the, those who don't know are like playing wind instruments is so dangerous. It's so dangerous to do. And so having to change that narrative to be like, well, it, it can transmit more aerosols, but if we do it safely, can be quite safe. Actually, perhaps we're, we're using more protocols than, than those who are not using any protocols. So let's, let's, you know, like, let's look at the science here. And so once that study came out, um, it was a, a, a challenge to have to then go to my administration at Kauai Community College and say, please let us play in person. We, Kauai at that point had zero cases in like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And so uh, we have uh, our county level mayor and, and other um, leadership were very stringent about Kauai and keeping things close. So I said, we, we, have, we're the, we have the best shot here of being able to meet in person. Please let us meet in person. Um, and that was a, a, about a month of anguish going back and forth. No, it's too dangerous. Okay, well, how about this? And it was a negotiation process. And so then for the last, uh, last school year, we met in just small chamber groups. And for the jazz ensemble, we did combo work only, which was a blessing in disguise because we really allowed everybody to learn how to read the changes, learn how to improvise, learn how to really make sure that they understood what was on the page. And we just did lead sheets and, and more combo work. Um, and then the orchestra did all chamber music. Um, but because we had so few members, we had about 10, I was able to find music where now we were one on a part instead of having all the first violins on the same part, all the second violins on the same part. Now we only had a few of everything. And so I found some pieces 
Uh, I went in, in the rabbit hole of open source and found some really, really great pieces that we would have never programmed otherwise. So that was great too. Um, and then the, the Wind Symphony, we did all chamber music because that was the, the most dangerous group, right? With the, num the highest number of, of wind instruments. So we only rehearsed outside. Um, and since nobody else was on campus, it was fine. We just took over the whole campus and small chamber groups that then uh, we would rotate personnel. Everybody played outside and we did all the, the protocol with masks and bell covers and all those things um, to, to appease the faculty or the administration to make sure that, that they felt it was safe. And then we were allowed to, to rehearse in small groups. This year, we've gone back to full, full ensembles and, and using all the, the guidelines from the aerosol study. So half we rehearse for half an hour, take a small break, rehearse for another half an hour, open all the doors. Um, everybody's using proper PPE and, and been able to, to rehearse together, but we have yet to be able to perform publicly for, for any type of audience. Even if I, I had a whole plan about doing it outside in a tent, um, get a sound system so that it, it, it wasn't going to be allowed because the they are just too scared. So it was, I have to say it was difficult because we all often compare what others are doing. And so I saw that Jeff got to do a concert at the end of last semester. And I was like, I wanna do a concert. And I sent it over to her, nope, can't do a concert. So it's just that that inconsistency I think has been a little bit frustrating. But then I also have to remind myself that uh, when everybody else went online, they allowed us to rehearse in person, uh, even if it was small chamber groups instead of full band. but. Um, you know, that, I think that's been the hardest part is, is nobody knows, knew what to do. And we're, we're now coming around at the end of having that science. So anyway, I, I talked for a little bit long, but. Uh, no, 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 thank you. Tell our story. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Chad. I, I, I just, I, I hear this leitmotif of, of, you know, angst, uh, you know, throughout these past two years and, um, you know, I think about, I, I just want to offer also, I was directing the university strings at UH West Oahu, which is a small string ensemble. And when, uh, when we came back from spring break in 2020, uh, we were, we had been preparing a Bach uh, concerto with Dr. Katie Luo uh, and our students, you know, and a couple of other really terrific pieces. And, and um, and we had to, I, I felt so responsible to those students who, who um, in a way, they, um, they needed music more than ever. And, and I ended up spending, instead of a weekly rehearsal, I, I ended up having a weekly sectional. So that sort of multiplied my time with the ensemble by four. Uh, and, and we ended up posting one of those, those recordings online, uh, uh, learned how to video edit. And uh, I, I think though about the effect that this whole experience has had on our uh, student community. And I just wondered if, if you might be able to speak to that. Uh, you know, how did your students um, communicate to you their state? You know, what, what was going on with them? And, and um, I think also uh, what's going on with them now, now that we're starting to come back. Jeff, do you want to handle that? No, but I will. Uh, uh, I'll be happy to chat about that. <laughs> uh, uh, how are they doing? Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting question. And uh, um, I'm not sure I have great answers for it. I'll tell you that uh, the students have been uh, uh, our students have been um, remarkably resilient and remarkably flexible and um, remarkably understanding. 
Uh, I don't know if that understanding comes of uh, um, being empathetic with the, the frustrations that we're all dealing with, or if that understanding comes from just two years of a lot of promises, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, like it's like a construction job on your house. We'll be done in two weeks. COVID will be over in two weeks. Uh, uh, anyhow, so I think there's, uh, um, students have been, unbelievably excited to get back to campus. Uh, very, very excited to get back to campus and to be um, returning to, I, I, you know, normal, uh, uh, which we're still defining what that is. But um, that collaborative artistic experience, I mean, I don't have to convince anyone on this on the Zoom call about how powerful and you know, transcendent those experiences are. That collaborative artistic experience. There's just so few things in life like it. And um, to have that taken away and then these poor substitutes we all came up with to get through. Uh, um, golly, to have that come back as a source of, of direction and purpose and meaning for those students uh, has been remarkable. Um, how they're doing, you know, I, I've had a lot of conversations with colleagues about how they're doing. And I, I'd be interested to hear from you folks uh, if you see this is true. There seems to be kind of a consensus nationwide that there is, uh, or at least um, uh, on the Western states, that there is uh, um, a, a lot of fragility with the students now. And that that they're, they're, they're maybe uh, um, quicker to, um, I don't know, uh, um, feel, uh, um, like, oh, I, I, I just can't do that. I'm going to give up on it. Uh, uh, maybe not the, the long-term resiliency and, and stick-to-itiveness, which isn't a word, but I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to change and, and kind of resolve itself over the next few months and, or years, or if this is just a, a, a kind of a new normal with the students. I don't know. Thanks. Uh, Chad. I, I, yeah. I'd like to go next, sorry, um, because Jeff, I think, has the, he had the most difficult job out of all of us because, you know, my, our ensemble, well, I'm not sure how Sarah feels, but our ensemble is because they're hybrid, you know, we have a handful of actual students that are actually in the class. Most of us are made up of, or we're, our ensemble is mostly made up of community members and I was pretty sure that after all of this, you know, subsided, whether it was two weeks or, you know, a couple of years that we're at now you know a lot of them are are excited to come back and i you know it's it's where in jeff's position at, at uh manoa you know he has these are actual college students and you know the two years of of not having music you know these kids are are these his his members are getting you know they're they're still going to matriculate in in four years so he needed you know jeff really needed to um do a lot of work and I applaud him for all the work that he did to just you know keep music going over there you know they're the flagship campus so a lot of the things that they did we were able to you know follow in their footsteps so um you know hats off to to Jeff for you know navigating such a very I mean difficult situation they have over 200 members so I can't imagine having to do that um you know we had 10 members in our you know 10 actual students um, in the West Oahu band. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know how they, I don't know how they, they did it, but they were able to do it and, you know, retain their students, keep them engaged. Um, you know, for us, like we had said, we, we ended up uh, really taking a look at just who our student population was, who had registered for the class. And, you know, a lot of them were band directors. Um, so, you know, the, the effect that it, this COVID had, it, um, I guess we were all directors of, of high school groups or, or middle school groups on the island. So it was actually uh, fortunate that we were able to meet and kind of commiserate every week to just kind of see how things are going. What do you, what do you think you're, you know, what do you think is going to happen? What are you doing with your ensembles? Um, even in the fall, as things started to change a little bit, you know, we got to really throw out ideas to different, you know, different people about what's going on in their classrooms and, 
there was a lot of, oh, I'd like, you know, maybe I'll try that. You know, somebody had another idea. Oh, yeah, that's, you know, that's working at your school. I'll try it at mine. So, um, you know, we had about 10 people in the class and it was a really good uh, place for them to kind of genesis ideas instead of just kind of being disconnected during the pandemic um, if they weren't. So the other thing about this, uh, the pandemic and uh, some of the good things that came out of it uh, for for the, our student population, which are, again, our directors, um, we were able to connect with people on the mainland um, that we're not normally uh, being able to do before through Zoom, through Zoom sessions and things like that. So the good thing um, is that everybody had to learn how to use Zoom, Google Meets, or all these things. So even, you know, even uh, the, the senior people in our profession were, were knowledgeable about Zoom and being able to, being able to use it. So, you know, we had opportunities to meet with uh, people like just, just a few was like uh, Colonel Jason Fedig, who is the conductor of the uh, president's own, um, the president's uh, band in the, the um, in DC. Um, he talked to our, our teachers about um, the inauguration and planning for the music for the inauguration. And it was great to get a kind of insight into that. We've had people like uh, Richard Floyd, who's a master educator down in, down in Texas. He talked to us about some of, um, of his books that he's written and, and musicianship. And we even had composers like Robert Smith coming in and um, talking to him about the composition process that he goes through, as well as some of the COVID uh, things that he was uh, finding out and kind of leading um, at that time. So, you know, that was the kind of the, you know, the while, you know, the effect of not being able to meet together um, really took its toll. Um, there were there were some positive effects on the other side that we weren't able to do or focus on um, uh, at, at that time. So, you know, like you, you had said earlier, making a lemonade out of lemons, you know, that's kind of what we were able to do. And, you know, like going back to what I was saying before, we we're just lucky we had a small group like that. Um, you know, Jeff, Jeff guys are really the heroes on this whole thing and trying to figure out how to, how to do an ensemble or how to keep these students engaged. I mean, we had teachers, so of course they're going to be, they're going to buy in, into that. I'm sure um, they, they, their students just, they wanted to play, you know, so mm. um, we're fortunate. So, so yeah. Chad, the, the students that you had, um, even though they, they themselves were band directors, did you, did you get a sense that they also were dealing with their own students who, who had, you know, the, I, I guess adverse reactions to what was going on? Yeah, I mean, and like I said, that was a great community as far as being able to talk about those kind of things. Like, you know, what, what some of their students were going through. I, I know some of their students were depressed not being able to play in music, that it's such a, a part of their, their being, right? Um, especially in the high school you know but even in the middle school a lot of them you know that's what they valued and some some of them that's what they come to school for you know the music course <laughs> the two things music course and lunch that's what they come for so um you know that that really took a lot of the the, the winds out of their sails um and even at our even at our high school and even in the, in the ensemble at uh west oahu because we do have a lot of high school students and um their community was just they became very isolated because they couldn't, you know, play in a group. So there's only so many, you know, scales and etudes that you can play. And, um, and that just wasn't the same as, you know, being with each other and, you know, having that synergy. So a lot of them, yeah, felt, felt that way. But um, I think now as we're getting back they're they're, they're very excited. You know, it sounds, it's, it's, they're really glad to be back and mm -hmm. they're they're making music harder than ever so that's good thanks chad sarah um i it's been hard i think for our students because for i i think of, of some of our flagship members who have been in in the groups at kcc since their existence so 30 plus years already um, to go from playing every Thursday night as part of what you do to not playing at all um, 
and and we know the benefits that that go with with playing an instrument and something that that can stay with you for the lifetime and 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 in our groups we've got eighth graders through um 80 plus year olds and so that that very very large range um but one thing that that i have seen is that they they want to find that that comfort and peace through playing music so whatever it takes to be able to come and play once a week uh, they're going to do. So even if I was like, okay, so you play the saxophone, we're going to put a sock over it, or we're going to have you play in the aerosol bag, you know, like those things that um, when they first came out were, were found to be effective. And then we've, of course, changed the science since then. Um, but uh, whatever it took, they just did. And even now when they've got to play with masks still, because UH has a mask policy, you know, things like that, they're, they're all willing to do because there's just some something about music and being able to make music together that they're going to keep coming back. Um, as to how they're feeling, uh, I think it's just an, an up and down, but I do see a difference when people walk in the door and when they leave that something about that collective energy of, of having played music and, and whatever frustrations we're having, um, we, we kind of work them out through playing music and it kind of just re reaffirms to me uh, the importance of what we do and, and making sure that it happens. So uh, that's kind of how I've taken the approaches. Whoever's in front of me, whoever signed up for the course, um, because there are some that are still apprehensive about uh, coming to play because of COVID, um, but whoever signed up for the course, whoever is there in front of me, let's give it my all so that we can make sure that, that they have a good experience. And there's been a lot of positives. Uh, I think I've been able to actually work more individually with students on their own technique, their own journey on their instrument that I maybe wouldn't have had time to do before because we had um, like in our, in our wind symphony, 50 plus people. And, and now we've got about 25. So about half of what we would normally have, but then I can really tailor what we do to the, um, the playing ability of every student, which I think has been a, a blessing. Wow. Well, I, I only hope that we, we are able to continue what seems like an upward trajectory <laughs> so that, you know, I, I think about, especially about the mental health um, uh, effects of, of not being able to speak that language of music, because that's really like Chad, you said, um, this is often what students come to school for. And this is what keeps them in. And uh, um, so I'm curious, and uh, now that we're re-entering, um, what's that like? What are the, you know, with, there was a study that was mentioned, I think it was the University of Colorado, is that correct? The, the, That's one the, of two major ones. Mm -hmm. I remember CBDNA was instrumental in, in that. And, and what was the other one? Uh, Colorado State University. Colorado State, and University. I think that was with Maryland, if memory serves. I, I I could could have that wrong, but they're both of them were joint between two campuses. Mm -hmm. Go go ahead. If uh, I'm just interested, how that information uh, is um, now informing your practices right now, and what does that look like as we're coming back? Uh, what sort of um, you know protocols? Are, are you, uh, do you have in place? Maybe Jeff, if you wanna start with that. Sure. Uh, so CBDNA very quickly uh, uh, got, it, got the idea that we, we, we've got to do some extra research here and, and have some science to, tell, to help us figure out what to do. Um, because as uh, Sarah pointed out, um, really once that choir up in Seattle uh, uh, had that kind of a mass spreader event, then that, that, that was a, um, a scarlet letter on all performing ensembles for sure. And uh, uh, rightly or wrongly. And so uh, CBDNA and then a couple of uh, many other groups, I don't mean to say it was just CBDNA, many groups collaborated to get the funding together to get a couple um, studies going. And those studies helped inform uh, our suggestions to our administrations. Um, 
and our rec and yeah, and so that there was a, a whole lot of planning. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you folks had the same experience where every two weeks you'd have a new plan for, for what, what might work and what might not work. And then, okay, wait, that doesn't work anymore. All right, well, here's the new plan. And, and uh, plan I learned is a verb, not a noun. Uh, it's an action verb that needs to be uh, planned again and again and again. So anyhow, sorry. Uh, uh, CBDNA came out with some recommendations about uh, um, distance between and um, time in rooms and all these protocols that I, I think most ensembles ended up kind of defaulting to those and using those to go to admin and say, uh, see, we can do this safely. Uh, there's actual uh, research on this now. Um, and that included also like filtration systems, like what, what the specs needed to be. Yeah, it sure did. And, uh, um, for some band rooms that was fine. And for a lot of band rooms uh, or choir rooms or just rehearsal rooms generally, I mean, my goodness, uh, uh how, how would we even measure, uh, the, uh, recirculation per hour in those rooms? Uh, uh, um, and I, I think this is unfortunately a case of, of uh, those who had access to um, resources like the, the funding to be able to purchase six or eight uh, uh, machines to put in your room and fantastic for those programs. But uh, those programs were far and few between. Most programs weren't able to uh, um, actualize any kind of uh, um, air purification or, or any, any of those strategies. So it was mostly just masks, time in room, distance, uh, uh, those kind of things. Um, for marching band, uh, that was a, a such a struggle to convince admin that we don't meet inside. <laughs> Please come down and see what we do. <laughs> we are out in a field. Wind blows through the field. Um, but that was that just fell on um, deaf ears at the beginning. Maybe that's an unkind characterization. It fell on ears that were uh, um, saw a lot of risk in that and not a lot of reward. And so uh, why would they take a chance on something if there was going to be that kind of risk? Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of making plans and uh, changing those and adapting those plans. And then as, this, as our understanding of the science evolved, those plans evolved and I think continue to evolve. Uh, I dare say that not very many of us are eager to even look at CBDNA updates to that research now because I think they're still encouraging us to uh, only be outside and um, put masks over everything and and you know I, I'm just kind of kind of do this to that research right now. <laughs> yeah. So what it looks like right now um, is is your your indoors. With your ensemble, uh, still me. Yes, we are. We are uh, all indoors. Um, in one oh eight, that that's our, our main instrumental rehearsal room. It's a very large room. Uh, uh, the doors can easily prop open to uh, increase that uh, air circulation. In room thirty six, which is our choral rehearsal room, there's those huge kind of barn doors on one wing of it that the. Uh, uh, choir and vocal folks had open almost every day uh, until we learned that that um, broke our air conditioning unit and and got some rust going in the piano because that room is not meant to be open. You know, the the, the lessons we're all learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm taking too much time. Yeah, we, we are back uh, indoors now and um, students are still wearing masks uh, and so am I. And but specialized I, masks. Are they specialized masks like for a trumpet player or that? We did that for a long, long time. Uh, uh, when we were able to meet inside or outside, the marching men too all had masks as well that allowed for uh, um, mouthpieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are still using um, masks and bell covers, uh, even though our, our room, we can open it from that we have we have a door on on three of the four walls, uh, and so we open we open the doors and we we're spread out six feet apart. But uh, going with whatever the guidelines from the university say in terms of mask wearing, um, we're kind of just following that. Um, I think the biggest thing that has been 
of very positive of our students is that I'm like, if you're not feeling well, if you've been a close contact, please just don't come. And so I'm still running every rehearsal hybrid, uh, in a hybrid mode where I just open up my camera or my computer and anybody can zoom in to our rehearsal. So I said, if you're not feeling well, if you're uh, if you've recently traveled and you haven't taken a COVID test yet, even though it's not required by the university, um, what we want to avoid is our scarlet letter of the, there's been a positive case on campus email in the band program. Like we, that, that's what I told them. Let's, let's just avoid that. If we can be completely under the radar, then th they'll be a little bit more uh, understanding about, you know, our bassoon player um, not putting a bell cover at the end of her bassoon. Uh, although she, she, she does, she's faceted something, but um, it, it, let's just not even have it come to campus and then they won't care. But what they care about is the transmission between person to person. So if we can completely eliminate that and we have not had, knock on wood, any, um, any transmission between people and we haven't had, knock on wood, anybody uh, in our ensembles who have uh, been positive cases. Uh, and I think that's because really uh, one, one student told me, this is the only place I go. Like I, I, I go to band practice and then I go to my classes online. Um, and so that, you know, like that is the one place that, that if, if they didn't want to learn on uh, be in person at school, this was still the one place that they were willing to take that risk to, to possibly be exposed because music was that important. So I think that, that that's been something our ensembles have, have done that isn't part of the study necessarily uh, or part of any protocol that's required on campus, but we're just looking out for each other. And that's because we know we have some members who are in their 80s um, or have family members who are older um, or very young who cannot be vaccinated still. So we, we've looked out for each other and people are very good about letting me know, hey, I'm gonna hop on the Zoom today because uh, I just, I'll, I'll just stay home and, and practice at home. Thanks, Sarah. Chad. Um, well, Sarah, I can't believe you're, you're yeah, still doing hybrid. That's that's a lot of work. That's pretty, that's amazing. That's a lot of work on your plate. Um, we we just started actually um, playing together uh, maybe about two weeks ago, right before spring break, we were able to finally have one rehearsal together. We just, um, that's when we started bringing back the band, um, you know, at, right after the Omicron wave had kind of subsided, um, we were starting to get very uh, less and less cases. And so that's when we felt like okay, that's when we could make the move um, to that. We, we were kind of in a holding pattern from the beginning of the semester. We were just meeting, um, well, in January, everything had to be online for those first two weeks in the university system. So we did those first two weeks. I think we ended up going about four weeks um for us just just online and then we had a couple of weeks of um in person with just the the people that are registered for the course um and then um then once once things kind of got better in our state we started to to we started to put together an ensemble finally so you know this the we do we are adhering to the cbda study as far as using masks in the room um the students are still wearing masks and that's because uh, we're using a DOE facility and that's kind of um, I think they're still kind of uh, of recommending those things and our ensemble that's the the um, the difficult part about I think about it is because we have both UH guidelines that we are trying to adhere to but because we rehearse at a DOE school a state uh, a state public school we have these we have two regulations so it's Kind of navigating between which is the most, uh, which is the most restrictive, and going with that because that's going to, you know, that's kind of where we'll probably get, uh, uh, where we'll probably get dinged or we'll probably, you know, probably um, have some issues with. So, you know, the, the DOE side has been kind of the the litmus for for the um, for this. Um, it, you know, UH has a, has a little bit. Uh, uh, they're they're their policies have been, I think, a little bit less uh, strict than, well, not strict, but they've, they've had more requirements um, in, on the DOE. Well, I actually, no, now that I think about it, there's there's both, you know, D UH had the, the vaccination requirements and 
the DOE has certain mask requirements. So just really navigating between the two of them have been really, really difficult. Um, but you know, using this using the CBDNA study as well as the University of uh, Colorado State University study has been really key in um, making people feel comfortable coming back to play music. I think that that was the biggest thing. Just making people feel comfortable coming back to play music because we're taking these precautions and that's that's basically what the the studies have been helpful for me to um, make make sure people we're doing the best job we we value you you know the music is important but you as a person is more important and we're going to try to do everything that we can to to be able to get you know both music and and you so um that's that's kind of what what we've been doing Mm, thank you. Yeah. So, so I think it's fair to say that we're still in a world that doesn't trust that the pandemic is over and that, that isn't really sure when it's going to be over and what that's going to look like. And, um, and, you know, we recently had a UH system uh, change in policy that's coming up soon where uh, instructors in classrooms, as long as they're six feet away, can, can actually take their mask off and uh, communicate with their face, uh, which I, I, I imagine that's gonna be huge for, for all of you. Um, what does the future look like? I know that's a big question, but I think this is our, where we, we have a few more minutes and I just, I, I thought we would end with, with this look into the future. Uh, Sarah. Well, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because I like to, um, I like to make sure that the ensemble breathes by going, and, and I was like, did you, did anybody, oh, nobody, nobody saw that, you know, <laughs> when I'm wearing my mask. And I, I, it made me realize how much I use my face when I conduct and, and going, okay, no, no, you, you clearly didn't see that I was smiling at all of you because this needed to, to have a, a more upbeatness to it and, and or looking, looking at, at certain instruments while conducting and I don't know if they can actually see that I'm looking at them because I've got the mask and the things and, and uh, hidden behind a shroud. So anyway, uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna conduct without a mask because I still, I don't know how people will feel about it either. Um, and I wanna respect that um, this, people are still apprehensive about not having a mask. It's also a little bit of a, an empathy with, with the, the musicians, because if they're still required to wear masks, I still am gonna, I think, have myself wear some. But anyway, I digress. Um, I am looking forward to seeing how we can get out of this, but I wanna err on the side of caution. Uh, we've come this far um, with, with following all these different mandates and, and protocols and um, that at least for us, we are almost towards the end of the semester um, and, and we'll wait it out through the summer and then adjust over the summer, I think. Um, but the biggest thing that I want to see happen that I would love to, to have brought back is the ability to play for people. That's the last component. Like whether we have to play with a mask, sit six feet apart, play outside, whatever. Um, but the applause after you are done performing is really what we are craving. Because you put in, uh, you put in all this work and effort into practicing and rehearsing together um, to make a video to put online so that five people look at it. Uh, and that's just not, that's just not the same. And um, that is what we really, so if, even if the audience has to be uh, all wearing hazmat suits I don't care um, but but to be able to play for people I think is the next step that that I'd love to see happen because um, that's the final interaction of, of music making that we are just not not having uh, enough of and so um, I guess I just want to close with that like whatever the protocols are as we get out of this pandemic and hopefully it'll be we keep saying it's going to be over and it's still, we're still in the two weeks. Um, but uh, the, the being able to play in front of people who are going to react after you play a solo and improvise in, in a jazz group um, or, or you, you know, play, play a piece of music and it's so beautiful that everybody's 
holding their breath at the end because it just ends so beautifully and, and quietly. Like that is what we're looking for. And so whatever else has to happen, we'll just do. And I think that that, that, that will feel the, the very best for all of us. Thanks, Sarah. Chad, the future. Well, I think the future, um, there's gonna be a lot more blending of online and offline um, education and opportunities. You know, we're able to, to utilize Zoom, Google Meets, to bring in people clear across the country, you know, to, to come into our rehearsals where I'm sure it was used before, but not to the extent that it, that it was during the pandemic. So, you know, being able to collaborate with conductors or being able to collaborate with composers, um, that's gonna be a great, that's gonna be a great thing that we're gonna be using um, from this pandemic. And we will be part of the future of this. I, I can, I'm, I can guarantee that for our ensemble too, that, you know, we're gonna play some, you know, composers that are still with us and hopefully zoom them into our, our rehearsals. Although hopefully um, if the, uh, if Congress passes this daylight savings time bill that we don't have to worry as much about <laughs> time changes, but that was the one problem that we've had because um, you know, our rehearsal starts at 630 at night. So it's clear class midnight in, um, in, you know, on the East Coast. So there's, there's not much we could do uh, with people on that side, but um, that's going to hopefully be in the future. Um, also, you know, just more intense music making for from our members, because they're not going to take music making for granted anymore. Um, you know, it was we, we lost it for two years. Um, we weren't able to have a large ensemble making music. And like I, like I was saying earlier, playing scales and, and etudes um, in, your, in your own house is, is satisfying, but it's not satisfying as the synergy is sitting next to, you know, an ensemble, you know, sitting in an ensemble of, of members and working towards this, this great piece of music, you know, um, we're our ensemble is smaller um this semester because we can we're limited you know we we want to limit the number of uh, members uh just just out of precaution um but hopefully when we get back uh we're able to do a, a large ensemble you know have the big cattle call anybody that wants to perf anybody wants to play can play so um i'm 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 hopeful that there will be an explosion of music making. People will want to make music and just uh, the intensity of it and the time and attention that they'll be giving it to it uh, in the future is just going to be, it's going to be great, I think. So um, I, that's, that's my hope for the future and that what I see um, coming up. Thanks. Thanks, Chad. Jeff. Uh, thanks, John. You know, uh, I dare say that uh, the response to your question is a regional one. Uh, uh, the answer to your question about how do we get out of this or where do we go in the future? I mean, the answer to that is very different in, say, Alabama <coughs> or Florida than it is here. Uh, uh, I mean, talking to colleagues across the U.S. pandemic, what pandemic? hasn't hasn't really uh, affected them very much at all uh and it'll be years if not decades till we can kind of look back with any wisdom on the directions uh we went and, and how regional those directions were uh, uh i can say from from my perspective here in hawaii and it's a limited perspective uh in, in, uh we are kind of eager to move out of this, but we're not. I mean, uh, um, we're here talking on Zoom, right? Um, but we are moving. Uh, um, these students have just been remarkable in their understanding and empathy and flexibility with all of this. I mean, with, uh, um, okay, we, we can come today. Okay, great, but we can't, okay, we can't come next week, okay. Oh, this week you want masks, okay. But, but but next week we need to be how far apart? Fine. How many people are allowed in the room today? Whatever. Um, I think that resiliency and flexibility that they've shown is a testament to how important this is to them. Um, I think Chad is absolutely right that some of this um, hybrid and some of this technology is absolutely here to stay. 
um, there we have we have seen that there there is a lot of good that can come of this. I think uh, uh, there is, uh, and I think we've all um, availed ourselves of that to lesser degrees or more degrees. But it's here to stay. But as Sarah points out, there there's just nothing quite like that. Um, making music together with other humans and and then being able to share that with other humans we had a concert uh with an audience uh what two weeks ago three weeks ago now uh, uh, uh just a couple weeks ago uh first concert we've been able to do in front of an audience in two years i think uh no i take that back in december we were allowed to have a couple people at a concert but an uh, uh, audience with a large a concert with a large audience and uh, the end of that, that concert was just so profoundly moving and touching for everyone on stage and in the audience. I'd like to think it was because uh, of our performance, but I, if I'm honest, it's more to, more to the fact that <gasps> we all got to experience this together. Uh, you know, to, uh, there, there, there's a line from a Robert Frost poem, the only way over is through. Or the only way out is through, and there's, there's, we're in it, and there's no way to go except just to go through it. Uh, and then John Green, uh, a writer I like, added something to that. He said, "All right, the the only way over is through, and the best way through is together." Uh, I think that's been a guiding light for us, um, not just in the UH bands, but uh, for all of us in, in this musical Ohana us being able to call each other up and lean on each other and, and, and uh, turn to each other for support uh, uh, for our students to be able to now come back together in person and, and experience that. Yeah, I've, I've said that and written it in, in a lot of emails. And I think I probably uh, pushed that on Sarah and, and Chad in a few emails too. Uh, the only way out is through and the best way through is together. Thank you, Jeff. That is, that is, um a wonderful way to end this this panel. I uh, I want to thank the three of you for the honor you bring to our students, our communities with your work. And um, Chadwick Kame, Jeffrey Bachman, Sarah Tochiki, thank you so much. Thank you, John. Thanks for having us. Enjoyed this a lot. Yeah. yeah.